I'd like to invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus came to his hometown and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the disciples and said to them, and, sent, and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed many with oil, anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It was an annual routine that really was part of the fabric of my formative years. Most of the time, I remember the routine would take place at my aunt's house, but sometimes it would take place in other houses. But the one thing I realized was the fact that there was a built-in surprise, one that I didn't know until about 1975. The annual event was the broadcast of The Wizard of Oz. And 1975 was the first time that I actually sat down in front of a color television set to watch it. And so imagine my surprise when Dorothy opened that door and I realized that, hey, this isn't just a black and white movie. It took me a while, I remember, growing up getting past being frightened of flying monkeys. But once I got past that, I began to understand a little bit about what the movie was saying. I had to put aside the one desire I had to, in my office, find a way to create a disembodied head that would be up above me that would yell out, I said go! <laughs> because I could think of no better way of ending a conversation or a meeting. <laughs> But of course, the true center of that movie was Dorothy's quest and desire to go home. But it wasn't until she had to experience these other things that she truly understood that there was no place like home. And as she clicked her heels, soon she found herself right back there. I would guess from today's gospel lesson that Jesus was not clicking his heels. Here he comes home. He's established himself as a teacher, as a rabbi, as a healer, and beginning to establish himself as the Son of God. 
And yet, when he goes home and he teaches in the synagogue and he teaches things that amaze people, but it's all dismissed, all cast aside. Greeted instead with, who does he think he is? Because he's just a carpenter. He's just Mary's son. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Home. I guess for everybody, it's not necessarily a pleasant experience. Home's a curious thing because if you think about it, there are probably a variety of different understandings of what home is. The two major ones are, of course, when you say home. You might think of that place where you grew up. If you grew up in one place, that place that you returned to on a regular basis, that place where still had your belongings stacked up on a shelf somewhere. Home. For others of us, home is where you hang your hat. It's where you live. And so there is this different definition of what home might be. I think for Jesus, it was more of a hat-hanging experience than anything about going back to where he happened to grow up. When we talk about home, we talk about the place we're from. But that's not always an easy thing to define. For me, the further I got away from western Pennsylvania, the easier it was to define because I could just say now that I'm from the Pittsburgh area. But when I lived in the Pittsburgh area, it became more difficult. You see, I moved, not just me, I moved with my family five times up until the age of 13. And so when people would say, where are you from? I wasn't sure how to answer that question because I didn't know which one of the five towns I should pick or should I pick the town where I was born that I only lived at for six months. I just wasn't sure. But now I can just say, well, I'm from the Pittsburgh area and nobody questions it unless they're from the Pittsburgh area and then they want to know exactly where. But it is this concept of going home that really kind of rubbed Jesus the wrong way. I think it was this kind of response that he elicited from the people there that really had an impact on him. Because if you follow through with the gospel lesson, as he sends his disciples out, he gives them very specific instructions. And the most curious of those instructions was where they're going to go and where they're going to stay. And if you're not welcomed, then you shouldn't be staying there. And in fact, as testimony, you should brush the dust off your feet. Now, I'm not sure what that testimony exactly means, but I could think that perhaps it is that this place isn't even worth taking the dust with me, that I'm leaving everything there because your reception was not kind, your reception was not good. Because as the disciples were called by Jesus to go do his ministry, it was going out into the world to be able to testify to Jesus Christ, to be able to heal, to be able to improve the quality of people's lives. And you see, home and ministry, I don't think, are very far apart from one another. Because ministry begins at home. Ministry here, no matter what we do, starts here at Living Water. This isn't the plate, this isn't our home where we hang our hat, but this is our home of faith. And it is this home of faith that allows us to be able to spread the gospel message of Jesus Christ in a variety of different ways, but in tangible ways. Not just through words, but through actions, through what we do. Denny outlined some of those with the message he had up there in terms of some of the things that are going on here in the congregation. 
but there are a variety of other things that happen each and every day that allows living water to share the gospel message of Jesus Christ with the world around us. And whether we're doing something locally or doing something internationally, no matter where the ministry ends, the ministry begins here at our faith home. Here where we're sent out to be able to do the things that God calls us to do. And we do a variety of different things. Some that we do, we don't even think we're doing much of anything. From the moment you walk into this door, you have people that meet and greet you, people that seat you. We have people that will feed you. But we also have that opportunity to be able to share in a variety of different ways through what we give through the different teams that we work with, through the different ministries that we support, by giving socks, by giving furniture, by giving clothes and food and water. We support a number of different ministries, not only locally but internationally. We make quilts to be able to share with people who are half a world away from us. We have prayer shelves that we share with people within and, without and, and outside the congregation. We do things with Grace Lutheran Church downtown in terms of help feeding the homeless and sheltering them and giving them clothes and different things of that nature. There are just a variety of things, but they all start with what we do, with what we give, and how we love. You see, home here is faith. And all of those things that we do reflect the faith that we have here in our faith home. And it is this home, not where we hang our hat, but it is this home where we hang our heart and where we hang our soul and where we give our love to improve the world around us, to do what God calls us to do, and to allow the world to understand that our second home is truly a home of faith. Amen.